There must be something somewhere. You can't throw a body out of a fast-moving train without leaving some kind of trace. Miss Marple, if we linger here much longer, I feel certain we should be apprehended. Oh, nonsense. No one will give a couple of track layers a second glance. I'm not altogether convinced our disguises are adequate. A shoe, a bit of cloth, something. I concede our timetable may have been out of date, but I'm quite sure the 715 is still running. Very possibly. But it could be most dangerous up here. Undoubtedly. Indeed. Miss Marple! Miss Marple! Yeah? There you are! Oh, I think oh, I heard dear. something. And I think I found something. Really? Eh? <laughs> Consistent with something having been dumped from a train, wouldn't you say? If it was the body, it would roll down and finish up against this wall. Then where is it? That, Mr. Stringer, is the question. Could be buried? You'd need a pick or a shovel. No, this is hardly an ideal spot for disposing of a body. Unless... From her fur collar, I think. Mr. Stringer, will you kindly give me a leg up? Certainly, Miss Marple, I have. Please, Mr. Stringer. No, no. Make a stirrup. Yes. Come on. Careful. Oh. Are you ready? Yes. Interlock your fingers. Oh, they it. are interlocked. Oh. Well, are you ready? Yeah. Oh. Oh. Magnificent. What a frightful looking man. What a frightful looking dog. Miss Marple, prudence demands a retreat. Mr. Stringer, I am convinced that the body is the other side of this wall. But that's the Ackenthorpe Hall estate. No. Perfect. Easy enough for someone to come down out of the house, recover the body, and dispose of it somewhere in the grounds. Someone from the house? You mean one of the family? Yes, or one of the servants. If they're lucky enough to have any. Servants. I wonder. Miss Marple, whatever it is, no, no, no. Mr. Stringer, we will withdraw. Temporarily. Oh. Fred, there's nothing on my books, madam, not so much as a mother's help. I'm seeking a post, not offering one. Pray be seated, do, my good woman. You need seek no more. You've come to the right place. How good to see the spirit of unselfish service is still with us. Now, let me see now. Yes, here's a perfect plum. Cheerful home for cheerful lady. <laughs> Old sweet, TV, radio and the use of car. Tea in bed on Sundays, pension scheme. Heaven forbid. Oh, all right. Mrs. Forbes Alex Bridge, setting up house near Monte Carlo. They won't have any foreigners, of course. Own gaming allowance. But I don't approve of gambling. Mrs. Hamilton Potts, the Dingley stud farm, you know. Seven children, eldest seven. Oh, no, thank you. Perhaps if I might have a quiet word with Mrs. Binster. I am Mrs. Binster. Oh, I see. Well, as a matter of fact, I wondered if there might be a position at Ackenthorpe Hall. Ackenthorpe Hall? Yes, Ackenthorpe Hall. Oh, yes. Uh, I think I can accommodate you. Yes. There's always a vacancy there. All right, you'll see. I'll answer that. Morning, madam. Oh, I... Not today, thank you. 
Inspector Craddock, County CID, madam. Oh, I am so sorry. Do come in, Inspector. I've just been going through all the papers again for the last two days, and still not a word about the murder. I suppose the police asked the press to say nothing for the moment. Do sit down, won't you? Lull the murderer into a false sense of security, then pounce, eh? Oh! What's that? Oh! Oh, how stupid of me. Yeah. Yes, I am so sorry. <laughs> Lucy! You will have some tea, won't you? Oh, uh... uh... Some tea for the inspector, dear, please. Yes. Well, now, have you got him? Well, I, uh... That is, uh... We have come to the conclusion that what you saw on the train was, uh... Well, a man and a woman... Yes, as I said. I mean, uh... Perhaps they were honeymooners. Inspector. I may be what is termed a spinster, but I do know the difference between horseplay and murder. Of course, madam, uh, Miss Marple, but the fact remains that there's been a thorough search of every train, and no hospital has treated any woman such as you describe. She was blonde and had on a coat with a pale fur collar. And no such woman has been seen getting on or off a train, either alone or with anybody else. But of course not. She was dead. Further, a complete search has been made of every inch of the tracks for the whole length of the line. Negative. Oh. So you don't believe me? I didn't mean to imply that. You certainly did. Not at all. I, uh... What then? I... I assure you, Miss Marple, that a woman cannot be murdered on a busy train a few minutes before a station without our finding out about it. I'm quite sure you mean well, Inspector. But if you imagine that I am going to sit back and let everybody regard me as a dotty old maid, you are very much mistaken. Good day. <laughs> Miss Marple. Good evening. I called at the police station and they told me you were out. I had no idea you'd come here. No, I don't suppose you had. Well, your visit is most inopportune. No. You see, at rehearsal today, I set in train a certain stratagem which I think will force our murderer to make a move tonight. I very much doubt it, Miss Marple. Oh? Our murderer, as you put it, is dead. I beg your pardon? Look at this. George Rotten's bank statement, important item underlined, namely a withdrawal of 100 pounds. So that explains it. Yes, I thought you'd see the point. Oh, yes, indeed. Though I must admit the motive for the murder of Routon had eluded me until now. He wasn't murdered, Miss Marple. He killed himself. Oh, you really think so? Well, it's obvious. Mrs. McGinty was blackmailing him. He drew out of the bank to pay her off, murdered her, and then left the money behind to incriminate the lodger. That theory has a familiar ring, Inspector. What? Oh, you did suggest something along those lines, true. But the point is, the lodger's innocent. Routon did it and then took what is laughingly called the easy way out. Couldn't stand the strain. Well, the case is wrapped up. I'm just on my way to tell the chief constable, sir. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Why not? Because I think you're wrong. You do? Yes. You see, I now think our murderer got the money to pay Mrs. McGinty off George Routon in a way which made it necessary for Routon to be disposed of later. Only a woman's mind, possibly only yours, could have dreamt that one up. It may irritate you, Inspector, that women sometimes have superior minds. You'll simply have to accept it. 
<coughs> oh, uh, don't you need this? Thank you. Good night, Miss Marple. Good night, Inspector.